Gregor, today you've named the, the squad for the, the 2020 Guinness Six Nations. Six uncapped players come into the mix, a number of players return from absence, but just talk us through your selection. Yeah, well, it's an exciting time. Uh, a difficult time for coaches to, to finalise that, that final squad. Um, but we're really happy with how our players have been playing. Um, young players that we've not worked with before, so that's always uh, an exciting moment to, for them, but also for us to see them in our environment. And the, the form of our, our players, both play, those that are playing in Scotland and without Scotland, has, has been excellent. So there's real depth in a, a number of our positions. Yeah, I think, I think it changes every, every year. I think there's, there's always young players that put their hands up, whether Blair King on, Darcy Gray and Matt Fagerson over the last couple of years. There, there are certain times in, in cycles when young players do come through after international retirements, after uh, World Cups, when, when players are away at the World Cup, play, other players get their chance to play and, and some of them stay within the, the team throughout the year. But it, but it is down to the individual. Play, players have to step up, whether they're playing at Exeter, Gloucester, Edinburgh, Glasgow, and compete hard to win a starting place. Because of those teams um, and other teams that our players are playing at, they're up against international players. So just to start for the team shows that they're, they're in great form, that they're, um, they've trained well, they've earned a start. And then if they perform well in those games, they, they obviously come on our radar and we then look at their fit with what we want to do as a team, where we need to improve. And we, as I said, we're, we're very pleased with the players we have available. You, can, you mentioned a little bit there, so we see Cornell coming back into the mix, Matt Scott, Roy Sutherland as well, who I think last played in Japan in, in, in 2016. Is this squad more based emphasis on form than people that, have, as you mentioned, perform well and, and get a chance again to, to put on that Scotland jersey? Yes, ab absolutely. And it, for, form should be a guide whenever you put a team together. With, with international level, you also look at what players have done for, for Scotland in the past and how well they've played at test level. Uh, now, if those players are in form too, then they've got a very good chance of being in their squad. But for players like Matt Scott, Rory Sutherland, guys that haven't been involved with us for a couple of years, it's been great to see how they've, they've grabbed their opportunity this year. Um, players like, like Cornell and, and, and Rory especially have been through some real um, tough injuries, some long time out of the game. So to get back playing, to get back playing well, shows that they've got real character, um, a lot of ability. Um, obviously, they've worked very hard to, to achieve what they're achieving. Gregor, you've also named Stuart Hogg as captain. It's his first time leading the Scotland squad in the Guinness Six Nations. He's also the most experienced player in the squad, but what other attributes will he bring as captain? Well, he, he has a wealth of knowledge of the game. Um, he's a real student of the game. Uh, he's played a number of years and a lot of test matches, so he knows the international game well. Uh, he knows his, his teammates. Uh, he knows what he wants to achieve as well, um, and he's been really focused at being the best player he can be over the last few years and bringing the best out of those around him. Uh, he was really keen to to get the potential of this leadership role and being, being a captain, which which is obviously very a, a positive um, that someone wants to do it, uh, and we believe he's the right person. Uh, the thought that's gone into how he would, how he would captain the team, how he's going to interact with other leaders in the team, uh, we, we're looking forward to him captain the side. Now, before we get into the, fir the, the first fixture against Ireland away from home, you're going to take the squad out over to Spain for, for a training camp. Just talk us through the thought process behind that and what you expect to get out of it. Yeah, well, we've, we've looked at training camps away from Scotland in the past. We did have one uh, this year in the World Cup um, in Portugal. We know Ireland and England go to Portugal or, or Spain every, every year. Uh, this year, really, it was because we have an away, an away game straight away. I think if we'd been... Uh, at BT Murrayfield for our first game, we probably would have stayed uh, in this great facility that we have at, at Orium. But the fact we're going away, we're going to be travelling, it allows us to have guaranteed better weather to train in, um, a real group feel that we're, we're together um, for those four or five days. And we know we've got a mission ahead of us to go to Dublin and go there as a real tight unit, a cohesive group that knows what they need to do to win and do all we can on that, that Saturday to get the win. And I know it's an old cliche, but there's no easy games in, in the Six Nations. But the first game is always going to be a challenging game. Ireland away from home. It's a great opportunity, though, for you and, and your squad to get off to a good start, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, th I think challenge is uh, the key word for us this year with, with what we face to, to improve after a disappointing year last year and also the opponents we have. Ireland away have the best record of any um, Six Nations team uh, at home over the last five years. 
England uh, at home obviously is a huge fixture for us uh, as our first um, home game against a team that almost won a World Cup or played fantastic rugby throughout the World Cup. And then we'll go all the way through to South Africa and New Zealand and then New Zealand at, uh, at BT Murrayfield in November. So there's challenges ahead of us, which is brilliant um, for our group to, to do all they can to win those games uh, and rise up to the challenge. And just finally, Gregor, just off the off the field, you, you've had some changes in the in the backroom staff as well. Just a note on the on the two new appointments of Steve Tandy and Peter Devillers. Yeah, Steve and Peter have been here for for a couple of weeks now. Um, before that, uh, they were looking at a lot of our players. I sent them a few tasks to get to know um, our players, how they're performing. They're looking forward to working with with the players. Uh, they're quality coaches. Uh, Steve has been head coach at Pro 14 level with Ospreys, so he knows our players. Knows. Um, the Northern Hemisphere game well. He's then taken a, a different route and a different challenge and coached them um, at Super Rugby level uh, for the Waratahs. Peter had a, an excellent playing career, um, played a lot of Test Rugby, but has also done well as a coach, coached at international level with, uh, with South Africa and also club level with Stade Francais. So they, they bring in new ideas, they bring their own quality and own precision in their areas uh, and they, they're excited about working with the group of players and working at Test Rugby.